praise and glory to Almighty God who is maker, creator, and Jesus is Lord of our life. Pass on free and to my fellow Hilton of the Gospel and to all of you, my sisters and brothers in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is indeed good to be here. And thank God for this blessed privilege of being in the house of the Lord and to be among these preaching giants and to all of the children of God. Amen. I want to acknowledge the presence of my ministry of music that is present today and the brother Willard Avery the third and uh, and that may be other members from our church. I don't want to see him if y'all just raise your hand. Uh, I think he's the only one that had made his arrival. Amen. Amen. From the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5, and from verses 1 through 5. Nehemiah chapter 5. Verses 1 through 5. Now it happened on the third day. I'm sorry, I'm reading. I'm uh, in the wrong book of where I was this morning. All right. And there was a great outcry of the people and their wives against the Jewish brethren. For there were those who said, We are sons. And our daughters are many. Therefore, let us get grain, and that we may eat and live. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There were also some who said, We have mortgaged our land and vineyard and houses that we may buy grain because of famine. There are also those who said we have borrowed money from the king's tax on our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children, and indeed, we are forcing our sons and our daughters to be slaves. And some of our daughters have been brought into slavery. It is not in our power to redeem them. For our men, for other men rather, have our land and our vineyards. Amen. Amen. I want to talk today for a little while about the cry of oppression. The cry of oppression. If you notice their cry is much like the cry of our cry today. They was crying out against the rich that was oppressing the poor. They was charging outrageous interest on money that they had loaned them when they could not pay them. They would siege or they would foreclose on their houses and their lands and their vineyards, leaving them destitute. We are much like the people of that day. There are many that's crying out. America is crying out because the rich 
is oppressing the poor. As I look the news from city to city and many of our major cities, Ohio is crying out, Michigan is crying out, California is crying out. Amen. They, they, they are uh, imposing their will upon the poor and the middle class. There have not been so many foreclosures on homes nowadays. Amen. And it's been more than any time in history. Amen. But for the enemy has risen up against us. And when your enemy fail his attack from the outside, he then begin to attack you from the inside. It is one thing to fight your enemy on the outside. But it becomes difficult when you must fight the enemy on the inside. Uh, one of his favorite weapons is selfishness. If he can get uh, people to think it only about themselves and what we want, then he will win the victory before we realize that he is even at work. Selfishness means putting myself at the center of everything. And uh, yes, and I'm only interested in getting what I want when I want it. It means exporting others so I can be happy and taking the advantage of them so that I can have my own way. In this, the Jews cry out against their fellow Jews. They were not crying out against their enemy on the outside, but crying out against their enemy from within. The Bible tells us that uh, to love our neighbor as uh, ourselves. Amen. And also love our enemies. And sometimes I think that our neighbor and our enemies are the same people. Jews were exploiting Jews. And the economic situation had become so bad that people who usually held their peace, people who usually didn't say that, the people who usually didn't protest, are now protesting against them uh, for different groups of people are involved in this crisis. I'm going to tell you about these four groups and I'll soon be through. I'll soon be getting out of the way. Number one, the people who owned no land and needed food was crying out against their fellow Jews. The population was increasing. And there were the freemen in the land and the people were hungry. These people could not help themselves, so they cried out to Nehemiah for help. They could not help themselves because they had no political clout. They had no inside pool. They had no political power. So they cried out to Nehemiah. The second group were uh, were land owners who had mortgaged their property in order to buy food. And the combination of debt and inflation is enough to wipe out a person's equity very quickly. 
some of us know about that. Amen. The third group. Well, the group who complained because taxes were too high. Yes, yes, and they had to borrow money to pay their taxes. It sometimes resulted in them losing their property. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it all went to the Persian king. King was getting richer. Common people was getting poor. There was also a fourth group. Amen. And the fourth group were made up of wealthy Jews who were exploiting their own brothers and sisters by lending them money and taking their land and children for collateral. I tell you, it had gotten bad. It is getting bad for us, but thank God it hadn't got as bad as it was then. I've seen our automobiles repossessed and our houses have been foreclosed upon. Land has been put up for share sale because uh, we failed to pay the taxes. But we haven't got to the point yet where our children have to be sold into slavery. That they may work off our debts. Amen. And sometimes I wonder how far are we from getting to that stage. Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, we see we are not the only slave that had ever been. You see, they had to work as slaves just to eat. Now, that's the only pay slaves get. Slave that not get a paycheck. Slave that receive benefits. All he received is enough food to give him enough strength yes, sir. Yes, sir. to go back and work the next day. Yeah, yeah. It was not an offer for him to loan money to one another, but it wasn't supposed uh, to draw interest. Yeah, at least not to their fellow Jews. They were supposed to help one another. Uh, yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah, right. Yes, they were supposed to help one another, but instead they took the advantage of their brother's disadvantage. Same thing is happening now. Yeah. We take the advantage, the advantage of our brother's yes, disadvantage. Yes, Nobody uh, just help anybody out of love anymore. That always meaning in the back of our mind, the age-old question of what's in it for me. Yeah. All right now. Oh yeah. We we've seen it in share cropping. Yeah, we've seen it in high interest loans. Yes. Yeah, the same old system that plays over and over again. See it even in the tax system. They even began now to attack our collective bargaining rights. They want to destroy the unions and take away our votes so that they can literally treat us like slaves. Uh, it happens in the entertainment world. Yes, everybody trying to use somebody in order to get what they want. Uh, these wealthy businessmen were selfish. 
They were exploiting the poor in order to make themselves rich. They were using their power to rob some and to put others in bondage. All because of greed. When this was brought to Nehemiah's attention, he called his people together to address the problem. Now, if you didn't already know it, let me be the first to tell you that it's hard to deal with your own people when they're fighting against one another. Now, the first person Nehemiah had to consult with was himself. Because this news made him angry. And before he could address them, he had to get a grip on himself. He had to get control of his feelings. He had to get control of his thoughts. So he could give some constructive leadership to his people. Yeah. Proverbs 16, 32 said, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He had to get himself together. Yeah. If the leader can't control his or herself, they will never be successfully able to control other people. Yeah, yeah, right. Am I right about it? Yeah. Leaders, preachers, pastors, whatever ah, capacity that you lead in. If you cannot control yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't keep other folks under control. So me and I have talked to God first of all about himself. It's a Lord Myself together because this has made me angry and, and, and I can't go in there acting a fool. And I need you, I need you to lead me. I need you to calm me down so that I can have a rational conversation with those who are exploiting us. And first, he appealed to thy love. Yeah, and then. Uh, he appealed to them based on the word of God. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he appealed to them based on God. Redemptive purpose for Israel. Yeah. He had to get them to look back. Yes. He had to say to the rich, look back. Yes, Think back and remember from where you came. Right. Remember I redeemed you from Egypt. And from captivity in Babylon. You need to remember that when I redeemed you, you were oppressed in Babylon. You were under a hard taskmaster. You were enslaved. You were beaten and worked without pay. Yes, uh, they captured you, they overran your city took everything you had and made you work uh, for no pay. 400 years in bondage you were and now how can you turn now and do the same thing to your own people. Sometimes we forget where we come from. We forget sometimes or where the Lord had brought us from. We need to just look back sometime. Just need to remember where the Lord brought you from. That's why I don't condemn people when I, when I see them living wrong and doing wrong things because a man I remember. Rush. 
than they were. And I can understand, amen, where they are because I've been there. They can understand where I am now because they have not got there yet. But I know it is through love and kindness that we mean people to the Lord. Yeah, he said you put your own people in bondage just for the love of money. Am I right about it? Yeah. And when he finished talking with them, and when he finished reminding them of where they were, and when he finished letting them know that the Lord's been good to you, when he finished letting them know that you're doing the same thing to them, that uh, the Egyptian had done to you. Yeah, I heard him say, Nehemiah, we hear you preach. Nehemiah, we decided that we are going to repent. And we decided that we are going to return to our land. We have decided that, that we are going to, to undo the unjust taxes. We decided that we are going to set free those that been enslaved. My Lord, you may have seen ourselves. And you may have seen just how wrong we are. Yeah. Yes, my Lord. They cried out. Yeah, before God. And I want to tell you, as I go to my seat today, Yeah. You got to cry out and God will hear 